We'd like to say good morning to everybody at the Antioch Church family. 4th of July, 2021. Greeting from everyone here. Let us open up with prayer if we can. Dear Lord, our wise God, we come here to say thank you. Thank you for letting us see another day. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting this church family come together one more time and help us as we go through this time of celebration of freedom that we realize that all people are not free. All people are not, don't have the right to vote. All people don't have the right to even come to church. But help us to realize that through you, you can free all people. You can free our hearts first, and then you can free our minds, and you can help free our people. Help us as we come together today to learn from you, Lord, that we can go out and be better servants, be better disciples, and move to a higher place, closer to you. Let's get rid of the old man and put on the new man. For in all things we pray, amen. As we ended up from last week and studying from this week is Hebrews and it's talking about faith. And we come down to the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 2. Uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Okay, from there it reads, it said, Now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So as we know, faith is always something that you, that you have to just trust without even knowing. No need reason why or how, or, but just trust it, it's going to be there. And that's just what faith is. And as Christians, it's even more important today because we try it on every direction. We try it at every angle. We try it at every part of our lives. So faith is, was important then. It was important now. If it's going to be even more important in the future. Because as we go through these many trials and tribulations, the only thing you have a lot of times is just God and your faith. So, you know, your money can only last so long. Your health can only last so long. Your family can only last so long. You can't put your uh, faith in material things. <coughs> we need to start redirecting our faith in spiritual things. If I might add something. By faith, faith is the key to our walk with God. By faith, we move mountains, slay giants, drive out demons, receive the promises of God, obtain the victory, overcome oppression, overcome an enemy, get our financial needs met, etc. And you know, it's, it's kind of a, a word that's it, it's, it's easy to say, but it's hard to grasp in a lot of aspects. Because, you know, if you have to see something, it's not really faith. But if you can believe in something to happen and knowing it's going to happen without even actually seeing it, that's where your faith come in. And, and, and the faith is something that we just don't, you just don't have to have it. You have to build upon it. It takes, a, for me, it takes a lot of years. It's still working on it. But each year as I go through studying the Bible, praying, uh, seeing uh, faith warriors of the past, your faith should increase each year. It should get better because you, you realize what God is doing for you. And if, if we grow, hopefully, you, as you grow, your faith should grow. And it's the only way you can develop as a Christian soldier. Because they like say it's a mean world out there. We can't make it without faith. It's our foundation. It's what we start from. It's, it's like building a building. You can't build a good building like, like, like the people in Miami notice and, and with that uh, building collapsing. Without a good foundation, it'll fall. So faith is the key for all of us. And, you, and, and to have that faith is going to get tested. So if it's not steady and it's not set right, it'll fall through. So we're trying to help you develop things, what you need to do to develop your faith. And part of it is trust. Part of it is love. Part of it is praying. It's all those things. But all the things to help build your faith. And the only thing we can really depend on that is God. 
uh, one section here, it just talks about it from a uh, thing. It says, faith is a declaration that you're willing to die with God, ride or die with God. You know, we always talk about these you know, young guys or young people talking about ride or die. That's what you should really ride or die with. It's the true faith, and the only thing you can really depend on is God. You know, we always talk about with our partner, with our gang, or with a group, or whatever. But the group can only go so far. The gang can only so, go so far. The, uh, the your family can only go so far. But God can keep you always there. He's always looking out for you, even when you're not looking out for yourself. And faith means sticking with, staying with something. It means no matter what people think, say, or do, we're sticking with God. Because people are going to try to help when you're down and out, try to help uh, discourage you more, push you away, push you farther back. But the thing is, as Christian soldiers, you need to hang on to God even closer, even tighter, even more demanding. Just like in Job, how his, his own family tried to deter him from God. His own friends tried to deter him from God. All these things, it, it just remind us that when things go bad, that's when we need God more. Don't, get, don't push away, push closer to him. Because in the end, he'll bring you through it. Any comments on that? Well, like you were saying, you know, it takes time. Sometimes you, you have to, you have to believe. It's like with me, man, I was, you know, I was crippled when I came back uh, from Hazel Park, Detroit. And I was walking crippled, and my, you know, uh, my spine had suffered some damage. This lumbar vertebrae had popped out. But the Lord took His time healing me. I had to believe. I had to believe for seven years before I actually was, you know. I just had to, I had to believe and walk by faith that I was healed. And I believed I was healed when I didn't have the symptoms of being fully healed. So, you know, seven years later in 1990, you know, there it was, you know, my healing. And I started running again a little bit. I felt, you know, back to my old self. So, you know, that really built my faith and trust in God. You know, he didn't, uh, I, I wondered why he didn't, you know, heal me all at once miraculously. Anyway, he kept me humble, and now I, I can see, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think he disagreed with me, and, but I believe he, he really called me to celibacy because, you know, if he wanted me married, you know, he could, he could, he have done that when I was, I'm 60 years old now, and I'm not thinking about, I'm just, I'm just trusting in the Lord, you know, trying to be like Christ. And I see, I think if we look back and I, through our lives that the, the health issues that we had or the serious, uh, Incidents that we went through, or uh, the near term thing, is, is because of the faith we have that God sustained us that one more time. It's not nothing that we done, or we were lucky to get out of that, or, or, or what we did is if our faith and our trust in God that put, and it helps you through those tough times. So, you know, it, it, it's it's important thing, and it's it, you, I can't measure it in your heart, you can't measure it in my heart. But God knows how much faith we have. God knows how much trust we have. And we can develop it. If we, if we don't have any, we can develop it. If we have a little more, we can get more. But the thing is that it's a continuous thing. To continuously working on building your faith, continuously working on building your trust in God. And, you know, and these things will, that you run into won't be as bad the next time around. Because you know that God over there actually bring you through it or bring you over it or, or bring you around it. So, you know, that's what makes me feel better. Well, it, excuse me. Which comes first, faith or belief? I, from my things, I think you have to believe first. I believe you have to believe first. Believe with faith. Yeah. But they kind of like hand in hand, peanut butter and jelly, you know? That you can't have one without the other, but you have to believe first what God has said, and and that's and, and as as Christian, you know, and as we looked at the verse Genesis and the early part of that, their main failure was lack of belief, and it's the main failure we have today. And people just really don't believe, but then with the belief comes to trust. So you know, it's kind of hard to kind of separate them, but. If you need one, you need them together. They need to come together. But, you know, to believe, you got to trust too as well. So it's like, the, I guess, sort of like the chicken and egg type thing, you know? 
<laughs> which came first. But they work together hand in hand. The building upon the faith, you know. Uh, Hebrews talked about the great uh, leaders, and they said, look at the third party faith. Uh, it says, it's talking about we never have to be able to explain things, but we will trust him. And we know God by doing things. We might not be explaining it. We might not be able to tell how he's going to do it. But we just need to trust he'll do it. You know, with people raising your families and going through tough times and situations, I, I know a lot of us are asked how time, Lord, can you help me get through this? And that's your trust. You know you don't know how he's going to do it, how he's going to bring you through it, but with your trust and your faith, you know he will. So that puts a lot of us at ease when we're going through these tough situations, and health situations, financial situations, that, that God makes ways out of no ways. Good point. Uh, like you say, the building upon over the years, it helps increase our faith. Going through this different situation and, and trial and tribulation. That, like I say, it's something that we can't really like that win. We can't really see it or touch it, but it, we we have to have it there. We know it's there. Because without the faith, and, without, and once again, without the belief, that's, that's our foundation that we build upon everything else with dealing with God and being his children. Because those two main things, it's like we you know, when we talked a while back how we got our tool bag or our weapon bag, those are things we need, that's what things we fight with. If our trust and our faith and, and our belief and all that and what, what, what God wants us to do.
church prayed for him for seven years, no results. She kept on praying. She prayed for 14 years, and that 14th year he quit drinking and came to God. I think sometimes we uh, feel that we are going through something worse than somebody else, and then we'll give up. And that's it. That's a good point you made, brother, uh, how we need to communicate with each other and that we all on different levels in faith. Yeah. And when one and we talk with one another, we communicate each other, help one another out, and we can help sustain each other with, with our faith walk. Mm -hmm. That we can't do it by ourselves because sometimes your faith, your, your faith kind of wanes. Sometimes it rises up, you know. You're never at the same level with your faith. It's always a day-to-day Battle is a day-to-day -day, uh, thing for us. I, I'm speaking for me. Right. That, you know, that I'm a lot better, but it's still sometimes, there's times when it, it kind of falls by the wayside and I got to pick it back up again, you know. But through help, from each other's help, through each other better communicating, that we can help each, increase all our faith and all our trust in God, you know. So it should be a group process as well. Mm -hmm. That we... Go ahead, brother. Excuse me. It's still, the, you got to come back and say which comes first, believe the faith. Okay? If you believe, you can have faith. If you do not believe, you can't, not going to have faith. That's a good okay? point. You are led by the wickedness. You are led, you are led into darkness. In Paul's Letter to the Philippines, to, to, the, to the Philippines. He said that, and in, I think it's the third or fourth chapter, he was saying that, and this is something that we don't do people, in my observation. That that you have that within you that is good, which is blessings, because you believe in the faith that Jesus has instilled in you. You're not supposed to keep it. You're supposed to share it. But instead, this church stays by itself. That church over there stays by itself. And that person stays by itself. They don't share even the love of Christ with each other. You got to believe what he has given to you. He didn't give it to you for you to have it as your individual gift. It is to be shared. That's when it rains, it doesn't rain on the just and the unjust alone. It rains on everything. The sun fell on everything. If he was a selfish God, you got to believe this before you can have faith in that belief. Am I right? Or not? Yeah, it now, makes good sense. Yes. Uh, and what he's saying that criticized yeah. I was just, I had read this, and um, uh, and as well as it's in the letter that Paul wrote to the um, Philippians. To, uh, to, well, no, no, I mean in all of his letters. Yeah. Is that he would, like he, he, he said that he would, if, if he must die, as long as he died with the belief in his faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he is, he is happy. And, and the people that are afraid of death, that we don't, I don't think that any of us want to die, but we know we want to die, and yeah. he doesn't believe that. Mm -hmm. But we sheer away from talking about death. Other than when somebody's laid out up there putting on a show. Yeah. To a degree. Uh, but if you live accordingly to true faith and follow the word to the best of your ability, and you can't do it by yourself, you have to ask for strength. And that's what it says there in the, uh, what is it? Psalms that uh, make 
May the words from my mouth and the meditation in my heart be accepted in your sight. Talking about in Jesus Christ. And in sin being accepted, your words being your action being accepted by him, that is your light shining into other people. That my love for life is free. But we uh, don't we don't act like that. We act consistent. And it says, and we can move into Hebrews 11, 6. And it said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Like, again, it's talking about you. You have to believe first. You have to believe it. And then, you know, and without faith, it said, no way we can please God if we don't believe uh, or have faith to, to make you know, and no way you can be saved because those are the key factors as we keep going on. Your foundation, you believe in first in God that He can do all things, that He made all things, and then the faith is that you know that that He will bring you through. So we, He's saying it's impossible. When He's saying it's impossible, it's <laughs> it, 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 no it's nothing else to say because said without that faith. And if you don't get it, you need to find a way to get it. And, it, and, it, and you have to keep on increasing it from day to day, building upon it, being better at it, getting closer to God. But you, the belief part has to come too. So you have to work hand in hand. Got any comments on Brother Wesley? Yes, because you know, we were what Brother Leroy was saying. How, you know, all men have not faith. The Bible says so. All men have not faith. And, and then, it's, I think it says in Ephesians, the second chapter, that faith is a gift of God. So he's given me, he's given us that faith to those that believe. We had to believe, and then he, you know, he, like I said, we studied, so show us how to prove, and we studied, we realized we, we, we need to have faith to please him, and uh, he gave it. We've got that gift. We've got, we got the gift of faith, the gift of God, and we realize all, all, all men have, they don't have faith. But faith is not given to us. You have to earn it through belief. You got to believe in order to receive faith in him. If you don't believe that Christ is the son of the almighty God, or he gave his life joyfully, But he said to his father, let it be your will. And it's the same thing he believed in the father. And that's where his faith came from. And that's the same thing with us. You must believe in order to have faith. And in studying the word, not necessarily listening to the word, but studying the Hebrews 11 uh, talks about uh, he heroes of faith. And one of them was Joshua. We know that Joshua was one that was a great uh, leader for the people of Israel. But he remember he had them to march around this the wall seven times. And, he, and it's not because uh, they needed to do it seven times, but he wanted to show the people how God works. He believed in God enough because God gave him his direction that, that he happened to do it. 
And, it, it, and could, God could have just immediately said, you know, to just um, knock the wall down completely. But to help increase the people's faith, to show him how the God works, he had them to do this thing. But the people also had to trust and, and believe in, in what Joshua said to do that. So it was kind of working. God did this to increase the, the people of Israel's faith. And, you, and if you look at Genesis, another example of that was Sarah and Abraham. Remember that they had their child in old age. And, it, and God came to them telling them they were going to have children. And, you know, and then Sarah kind of laughed. But she knew that what God can do and what God has done, that anything is not impossible with God. So, you know, there's so many examples of how faith worked in the Bible and, and all these faith heroes that sets the example that today it still works. Faith, the belief at first is there, but you got to have the faith to, to, to trust in God that he will come through. So we can go on and on with different examples. But the point I keep telling you that we got to keep believing, we got to study, we got to pray. All these things help increase and build your faith. And as you look back over to your life, you should, you should see examples yourself. How God worked through your life. That should increase your faith just that you're sitting here right now. There wasn't uh, nothing that you've really done. It's the, the trust and faith you had in God and he blessed you and brought you us this far. So as, as you look through Hebrews, I recommend everybody read the left chapter of Hebrews, and it's talking about all the different champions of faith. It's just, it's not all of them, but it's, it's a great example of the ones, you know, of how God works. And it's still working today. It talks about Moses. Remember as the people went there in Egypt, as Egypt uh, was the Israelites first was, was captive in Egypt. It, from a human situation, it seemed like there's no way the people were going to get out of that situation, the Israelites. But Moses had faith and trust enough to God to go to uh, to, uh, to Pharaoh and, and remember all these plagues happened. And they stood their faith and trust in God that these things was accomplished. And it, but the thing is that I'm trying to point and, and, and emphasize, want to emphasize today that you have to stay strong with your faith. And we, and we have to, like you said, we can't just do it by ourselves. We have to communicate with each other. We have to pray. We have to study. We have to, when we see a brother or sister falling short, we have to do things to help increase each other's faith and push each other's faith forward. That is, it, it, it's, it's a thing that's going to be with us all the time and we have to keep working toward building and and, and moving it forward. Any other comments about that? Well, in Hebrews chapter 11, um, there are many examples of those who acted upon what God said. Although they did not see it with the optic nerve of the eye, they acted upon what he said, period. I would dare to say that oftentimes we're challenged by our senses and our gut feelings and our emotions more so than acting and following through upon what God said. I further contend that we have the uh, tendency to act upon tradition and flesh. Although we are aware of the fact what God has said. But we still choose in many cases to act upon our instincts our beliefs, our emotions, our influences, and on and on and on. We read this, we know this, but when crises, when challenges come, oftentimes, and thank God it ain't all the time, but oftentimes, 
It's our senses. And the reason why I'm lifting these thoughts is because the Bible, the Word of God, doesn't contradict God, the attributes of God, the personality of God, the characteristics of God. It is clear in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says in verse 6 of chapter 11, but without faith, which means that anything else is unacceptable to pleasing God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So if I were to approach God in my senses or act upon my flesh or act upon what my intellect or my gut feeling says versus what God has said, then that tells me whatever I'm going to do, no matter how right it may seem, if it's not in the will of God, according to the word of God, and it's not a step of faith, then that tells me that whatever I'm getting ready to do is going to be displeasing to God. Whatever it is. And we have to, either we believe and act upon the word, or we just read it and say that makes sense and that's what we should do. But if we don't act upon it, then we're only fooling ourselves. So the patriarchs, here's the re reason why I'm pressing this point. The patriarchs in the Bible, you look at all of these different examples in Hebrews chapter 11. Abraham wrestled with his senses, he wrestled with his emotions, he wrestled with his intellect, he wrestled with his nerves, he wrestled with his wife, he wrestled with his family, he wrestled with his culture, he wrestled with all of that. But the Bible says in verse 8, by faith when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, Notice that five-letter word, obey. Yeah, obey. Six-letter, six-letter word, obey God. So that tells me that without obedience, there will be no faith. Trust, yeah. Hope, yes. No, yes. But obedience and faith walk together. So he obeyed God, although it didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense to leave Speaker Hill and go to a place that he's going to show. He didn't even tell him where it was. He said, just get up and start moving. I wonder how many times God has spoken to us in our own little comfort zone and God said, just get up and start moving. Just head in the direction I'm going to show you. How many of us have actually stepped out on faith and say, I hear you, God? Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Another they will not follow. And I contend that many of our blessings, many of our breakthroughs, many of our hopes are shattered due to the fact we won't get up and get to moving when God says, this is the direction you're going to take. Faith, look at that, all throughout the Bible. You see it over and over again, over and over again. Notice that verse 13 says, these all died in faith. So there were many who believed and acted in obedience, but, did, but still did not see the promises or the fulfilled promise of the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. They believed that the day would come. Many of them, look at it says, these all died in faith. Not having received the promise, verse 13. But having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them 
and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. God has a certain level, watch this, of faith and confidence that he actually places in us. In the history of this church, 1926, in the history of this church, there were six people who met. And God, and God smiled upon them, Antioch, and to our audience, and says, if you act upon what I'm telling you, if you act upon what I'm showing you, if you act upon what you're praying for, I'm going to build a ministry in the Spiegel Hill community that will last for years and years to years to come if those who follow you act by faith. Look at that. So the roots of our faith is tied into not only ourselves, but our families, our lineage, our history. We've seen our parents and our families operate and function by faith with just a little bit. Didn't have much, but they made it happen. Now we got more than enough, and we can't get along. <laughs> it's hard to bring us together to come on one accord. Could it be we have too much? Since we have so much now, we don't need faith no more. We're just going about our way. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that it takes faith and obedience to please the true and the living God. What confidence does God have in you? That's the question in us and me. Can God really trust you to go to a land? Can God trust you to build an ark? Can God trust you to do something? without questioning him, without your senses and your intellect and your analytical thoughts. And I'm not saying those don't play some part, but can God trust you and me to walk by faith and not by sight, not by feelings, not by attitude, not by emotions, not by traditions, but can we just trust God? Can we just trust God? Say, you know what, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm just releasing it all to you. And I'm just going to, I don't know the outcome, but I know that you didn't bring me this far to leave me now. So we talk a good game, but do we act in obedience to what is written in the word? Well, in, uh, uh, as far as, uh, as that trust, because we started talking about faith, mm -hmm. even his disciples that had seen the martyr thing that he did, they questioned his actions. Mm -hmm. And he encouraged them, which all good leaders will do this, whether it's in retail or, or a driving a garbage truck, it doesn't matter, or ministry or whatever, is a good leader is a good listener. Mm -hmm. And Christ was an exceptional leader. Because, I mean, listener, that's what made him such a of beyond the spiritual aspect. But he asked his, he asked questions to his disciples. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he would teach them, and a lot of them still questioned him. Mm -hmm. Give an example when he was on the boat, mm -hmm. and, and, and the storm came. Mm -hmm. Hey, Master, we gonna die. Strong faith for me, right? Well, what did he say to them? Oh, be a little faith. They believed and heard the word, but they didn't obey the word. That's what I asked. If we first came in here, not a hypothetical thing, I just want to know which comes first, faith or belief. Well, you cannot have faith without a belief. Faith has to rest upon a foundation. So if you say, do you have faith? When you, got, when you walk to your car, your automobile, whether it was a keyless or an insert key, you didn't go in the hood and check it. No, you just believed that it would start. That's when you said it, when you said it, yeah, you, well, you believed it because you acted upon it. Like the pew you're sitting in. You didn't check it before you sat in. 
you believed that that pew would hold you. When you pulled around the corner, you believed that the building, the church would be here. You acted upon what you believed. Faith, verse 1, is the substance of things what? Hope for. But we don't always hope for it. That's what you're talking about. But it's the substance of things hoped for. And the disciples were feeble in their faith many times. Matter of fact, there was on one occasion, he encouraged them. I can't think of a greater encouragement. But even all the encouragement in the world, all the encouragement in the world will not convert a person. Only Jesus Christ can convert a person. You can encourage, 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 encourage. Calipari encouraged the team in the UK. <laughs> but them boys just couldn't cut it. You know, sometimes the encouragement is good, but it's not the end all. And I know that's not what you're saying, but that's not the end all. But verse 1 in chapter 11 says, now faith is the substance. The title D, the substance, the essence, the ethos of things hoped for. Look at that. The evidence of things what? Not even seen. And that's what they wrestled with. And we do too. But then there were times when they did act it upon faith. They went out and done exactly what he said and they came back and said, even the demons are subject to your name. Even this, and we're doing this, and oh my God, it's great. They acted upon the faith based upon the foundation of the word of what he said. So faith is the evidence of things what? Hoped for. So you have to act upon it. Many times I go to the bank and cash my check. Now I'm hoping <laughs> that it's going to cash, Brother Tony. But if I don't go down to the bank and at least try, how am I going to know? I'm hoping what? That the check will what? Clear. Clear. Well, what's my foundation of that hope? Is it the check or is it the institution that wrote it? It's the institution that wrote it. It's the one who signed it. The Bible is the foundation. God has signed it and God said, I've signed it, but you got to get up and get to moving with it. And I'll bless you if you do. And yes, my God from Zion, yes, we fall short. But that don't mean we got to stay short. Yes, we, we question, Brother Leroy, but that don't mean we got to question all the time. Yes, we, we, we slip along the way, but that don't mean we got to slip every day. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And there's a fight. Uh, there's a fight. Uh, in our lesson, we talk about the fight, uh, Brother Wesley. We got to fight, y'all. We got to fight. And we got to keep on fighting. And it's a fixed fight. Anytime you act upon faith, you're going to have to fight. And oftentimes, that fight's going to be yourself. You're your biggest challenge. It's not the people around you all the time. It's you. It's your flesh. You got to fight you. It's a predetermined fight, and we're not able to change that fight because our challenger, Satan, is going to continue what? To try us and to try our faith. He's on his J-O-B 24-7. It's predetermined, so we can get it out of our mind that we can get through this thing without a faith walk. Ain't going to happen. Even when you went to college, even when you studied for the exam, you had to act upon some type of faith. Some of y'all been to the military. You had to act upon some type of faith in boot camp. You know, it's always some type of faith action that we must take. So we have to take faith, but it's a predetermined fight. But the good news is the outcome is already decided. Why? Because God has already what? Went before you prepared the way. So he already knows what the outcome is going to be. We don't always know what the outcome is going to be, but he does. So he's determined how it's going to all pan out. It can't be changed. No. Once God has set it into motion, he said, I am determined what the outcome will be, but here's what you must do. Abraham, get up and go. And I determine that there's a country you're going to find. Noah, get up and start building an ark. And I determine that the ark is going to what? 
sail on water. Joshua, get up and go. And I predetermined that when you get up and go and start marching around, uh, marching around Jericho, I, I've already predetermined the outcome. The walls are coming down. If you get on the ship, back to what you were saying, Brother Leroy, I predetermined that you're going to make it to the other side. Why? Because I told you when you got on the ship, I'll meet you on the other side. I'm going to get you there. So I've already predetermined the outcome. I've already, he's already done that. So what we have to do is walk accordingly and believe that whatever the outcome is, it's all right with me because God is predetermined. What we grapple with, it does not always pan out the way we want it to. <laughs> That's what happens to us. You could have told Abraham, man, you're going to be 100 years old before you have a child. He didn't want to wait no 100 years old. He could have told Sarah, you're going to be 90 years old. She didn't want that. But God had already predetermined, so it's a predetermined fight. So since it's predetermined and God is a winner, he's never lost a battle. Amen? Amen. He's never lost. Come on, y'all. He's never lost a battle. So since God has never lost a battle, that means we're on the winning side. And since all of us are blood washed and blood bought, we ain't got but one dad. <laughs> He's just as much my father as he is your father. And sometimes we want to act like we're distant children. Ain't but one God. Ain't but one church. Ain't but one blood. Ain't but one savior. Ain't but one father who's already in heaven. And it's hard sometimes to get along with God's kinfolk. Amen. <laughs> But he wants us to get along. He wants us to be on one accord. It's we, us, flesh, by faith. There we go, by faith. But he's already predetermined. So since he is the undisputed heavyweight champion of eternity, that tells me that all the winner needs to do is just show up. If you show up, Abraham, I'll take you to the land. If you just show up, Noah, you'll build an ark. If you just show up, Joshua, the walls of Jericho will come showing down. Jesus, if you just show up on the cross, I promise you, when you die, you shall what? Rise again. I'm just wondering if we are willing to show up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what's on my mind. Pandemic has set in. Folks, are, are we really willing to shut up? Pandemic's passing away. Are we willing to what? Show up. By faith. By faith. So by faith. That's how we please God. That's what this lesson is about. To help encourage your word, Brother Leroy. Our faith. But we need more than encouragement. I wish that was all we need. It helps. And it helps and it helps. But we need to act upon what we believe. Amen? And amen and amen. Over and over again, we see faith, 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 faith. We'll finish if we act upon faith. We're going to get through it if we act upon faith. If God be for us, who shall what? Be against us. There you go. If God be for us, who shall what? Be against us. All right, any closing comments? Uh, just one thing that this faith thing that we go through is an ongoing thing. Ongoing. We have to keep building. We have to keep studying. We got to keep praying. We got to keep meditating. We got to keep communicating with each other. Got to keep encouraging one another for to make this thing work. Because you, you, you just it's not a standalone thing. It needs constant work and constant attention. Right. There's a little song we sing. Faith, it's a victory. Faith, it's a victory. Never alone, I've seen the lightning flash and heard the thunder roll. <laughs> Ain't that what the old preacher would say? Old school church would say, I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to what? Conquer my soul. I've heard the voice of my Savior telling me to still what? Fight on. He promised never to leave me alone. Never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. Old school church, they sung it and believed it and they acted upon it. 
It was an old school church that built this building back in 1975. I wasn't there, but I believe somebody probably was either meditating on that or thinking about never alone. They probably reached some different steps along the way. Brother Freddie, you was here, Sister Gwen, others were here. When they started building brick by brick, but somewhere along the line, they ran into some obstacles. And somebody said, no, we didn't come too far now. Amen. Maybe they didn't get along all the time, Sister Gwen, but they found a way to come back to what? A medium? They had to have disagreements. Had to. But they came to a medium. Maybe they fell apart over, I don't know, the color of the carpet. I don't. But they still came back together and made it happen. Huh? That's faith. Yeah. The outcome. The outcome is we're going to get God's house up. Oh, yeah, we're going to get it done. And we're going to hang in here together. So we are, sit, we are sitting and resting. Glory, hallelujah. The names on the pews, the names in the windows. You think about it. Your family, your blood, sweat, and tears, your lineage. Preachers come and go. I mean, I'm looking at retirement right now. I'm looking that way. But your legacy, your lineage continues right here. It's what you do together by faith that will take this ministry to the next level. Not by personalities. That ain't going to get it. Because the only personality that's going to get you where you need to be is Jesus Christ. Because if it's left up to you, <laughs> when it happens, it's not going to happen. Left up to me, it's not going to happen. But through him, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. Amen. All things are possible. Amen. All right, Deacon, you want to close us out in prayer? Uh, let us pray out. Uh, everyone bow your heads. Dear Lord. Yes, Lord. We come here today to say thank you for one more time you let us yes, Lord. under your roof. Yes, Lord. We come to say on the 4th of July that we're just so glad to be here. Yes, yes. That our country has survived 245 years or more. By faith. Yes, By Lord. faith. Yes, Lord. That our families have survived all these years through the trial and tribulation. By faith. By faith. Yes, Lord. That we're able to get up out of our beds. By faith. By faith. That we're able to come together and, 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 and move a little high. But it's your faith that keeps propelling. Our faith that keeps us closer to you. By faith. And yeah. by faith, the only way we can make it is through faith. By faith. And believe that you are the God who can make things impossible possible. Yes. That you can turn lives around. Yes. That you can make way that are no way. By faith. That all things can be done through you. But we have to believe. We have to keep trying. And we have to hold on to your unchanging hands. Bless everyone by the sound of my voice. And may the church say amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Sunday school lesson. We'll see you, Lord's will, next Sunday.